DIY Duke is back. We've got a special project we're gonna do. It's the half wrap. We're gonna use outside because summer's coming and I feel like working outside and getting a little vitamin D. But before we get started, let's check out what we're gonna need. So here it is. Here's a graphic of what this half rack is gonna look like. This is half of it. There'll be another one here. Let's go ahead and go to over the parts list of what we're gonna need to build this. First of all, we're gonna get four 10 foot, four by four pressure treated lumber. We're gonna have 24 nail plates, which we're gonna use. We're gonna use one pound of deck screws, two three quarter inch chair flanges. We're gonna use two three quarter inch by four and a half inch pipe nipples. We're gonna use two three quarter inch by one and a half inch pipe nipple. We're gonna use two three quarter inch pipe unions. And we're gonna use two three quarter inch pipe caps. Now for the tools list, we're gonna need a drill, a one and one quarter inch speed board drill bit because that sucker really goes through that wood. A Torx 8 bit for our deck screws, a saw, some PPE, personal protection equipment, and a square to get this puppy started. Okay, let's not forget our good friends, the tape measure and the pencil. And also optional, we're gonna have four metal stakes. Let's go see what we got in the junk pile. Well, look at what we found. You know, that's not a brand new pressure treated, but this is gonna work fine for our half rack. Here's something to know. If you don't wanna sp spend more money for pressure treated, then go ahead and buy regular lumber and then treat it yourself. And you can do that with a deck stain or whatever. Or if you're gonna seal it, get a good outdoor paint. Make sure you paint the bottom good and it's gonna be fine. But pr if you, you wanna buy pressure treated, go ahead and do that too, cause it lasts a long time outdoors. Now, you don't need the drywall benches. I just happen to have them but some kind of saw horses work good too, especially if you're gonna put your saw up and you don't wanna get on your knees. I didn't mention this. In my older age, I try to protect my knees, especially if you're gonna get down on concrete to put screws in the half rack, it's just a good idea. I mean, knee pads really save those knees. Okay, we got everything we need. So we're gonna just look at our diagram real quickly. And the first thing we're gonna cut is our 76 inch main beam there. But let's not forget our personal protective. Uh, equipment let's get cutting we're gonna cut a straight cut we're gonna put that right on zero and we're gonna cut the first one at 76 inches okay our next one we're gonna cut 41 inches that's gonna be the main support on the bottom okay now we're gonna cut the 36 inch piece It's really good to have that support from that main vertical beam. And that's what these are gonna be for. This is a 45 degree cut. We're gonna make another 45 degree cut here for total length from point to point of 27 inches. That will go on there and keep that main support from doing this. And the beauty of the miter saw is all you gotta do is adjust it over to 45 degrees. It even clicks and stops there. Again, if you don't have a miter saw, you have a circular saw, like a skill saw or whatever, you're gonna have to make two cuts because those blades won't go all the way through if we're before. Or if you have a hand saw, you're gonna be good to go just sawing away. A quick little way to cut another one without too much trouble is go ahead and use the one you've already measured and cut as a template and just put those 45 degree marks on there. That's pretty much gonna be the same. Remember, you're gonna put your blade on the outside of that pencil mark and not on the inside of it, or you're gonna lose up to an eighth or a quarter of an inch, depending upon the thickness of your saw blade. Just a little hint on how to speed things up. And that's it. That's all six pieces that we have. So, here they are. Doesn't look like much now, but it's going to in a few minutes. Okay, right now we're gonna go ahead and measure the holes and drill the holes while this is not attached, because then we can put it flat on the floor and be able to drill straight through with the backer board against it. It's gonna be a lot easier than after you assemble it, trying to get that drill bit through there and keeping it straight. These are the centers. Double check, inch and three quarter, inch and three quarter, 
That's half the distance across the three and a half inch four by four. Because remember, four by fours aren't truly four by fours because they've been planed and then they're turned into three and a halves by three and a halves. So we got a half inch drill with the handle, it's eight and a half amps. That's gonna make it easy. The battery part ones at the 20 volt level, you're gonna have a hard time. So the best thing to do is get some electricity behind it and a half inch drill that's got a lot of torque and that baby will go right through there. They don't call it speed board for nothing. There we go. Now, the cool part is, is we can just take our pipe and check that. We want enough so that goes in there without binding. So that's where we made it a little bit bigger than what it should be. So the holes are all drilled. Now, might be asking, how do you know where to put the holes? That's going to depend upon you, how tall you are, how tall the people are going to be using it. We went ahead and set it up for our heights. This one's going to be easy to determine. It's going to be the pull-up part, and you're going to want to get that as high as possible. You can always lift your knees up, hold your knees, or if you want to do some core workout, hold those legs straight out and do the pull-ups. Here, it's going to be more specific for you. As a squat rack coming up, we put one a little high and one a little low for shorter people. Same with the bench press here. One high, one low. That'll give us some variance there. Again, personalize that for yourselves and then it'll be specifically built for you and your family. Okay, for assembly to begin, we're gonna take our main support that's gonna go on the ground. That's kind of the eye to our eye beam. Now, one end is gonna be longer. This one's gonna be the back. And this will be the front. This obviously will be the front you step through to go ahead and start your exercises. That one's going to be more stable as you re-rack your squat or your bench. That's the basic structure right there. We'll call it the I-beam because that's what it is. We're going to go ahead and put this together. That's when our plates come in to hand. Utilize these to the max. We're going to put these on bottom and top. That will complete that I-beam. There's other ways to join it. People have used lag bolts that go all the way through this into this, countersink those lags. But the cool thing about this, it's easy, it's simple, and it's just very structurally strong. Over time, those lag bolts might be loosening, the lumber dries out, and they begin to separate. With these, you can use as many as you want and it's gonna really make that thing strong. Let's go ahead and start putting these on. That's where our inch and a half screws come in. You can use longer if you want. A little shorter, probably not good, but inch and a half is pretty good. That's almost half of the thickness of that four before. And see all those holes in these things? Doesn't mean you have to fill them all with screws. They just make them that way for different applications. So you can put five screws in each end, six screws if you want that's going to be really strong what we're going to do here is go ahead and center this piece remember this piece is 36 inches long what's half of 36 18. so let's find that 18 inch mark we're going to put it in the center and that is going to be cool i mean you could get really specific with that but i mean we're going to get pretty general that's that's definitely the center Go ahead and put your nail plate there, kind of center it here. If you do get some over here like that, remember to pound the edge over because that's going to be a very, very sharp point that you don't want to hit your ankle on or anything else for that matter. So otherwise, just try to center that and then put some screws in there to hold it and then put, you can put six screws in each side. That'll work 
Excellent. And we're gonna do the bottom and we're gonna flip it over and put two more plates on the top. And then we'll start building it up horizontally. And remember, this is our 21 incher that goes on this side. What's half of 21 inches? That would be 10 and a half. We'll center that pretty good. You can recheck if you like. That's pretty good. Give it a gentle tap for center. Put our nail plate on there. We're ready to screw this up. So this will be the bottom of the half rack, but as you can notice, we got some movement there. So by the time we turn this over and put two more plates there, that's gonna strengthen it and it won't be doing that. Okay, got both plates not going anywhere. Now, we're gonna put, find our center mark for our main mast. And to do that, we're gonna get our tape measure. Get that overall length, which is exactly four feet. So what's half of four feet or 48 inches, 24. Now, if you want to make things very easy, you could just take some of your leftover and put your block right there and just trace it. I mean, that's the center. You can measure both ways too. But this is where our main mast is going to be. Now, you want to make sure the holes go that way. <laughs> Don't turn it upside down and have the holes down there. Or you'll have to redrill the holes. So, which way did the holes go? This way? No. We're going to have to have them go this way. Because that's where our racking pins will be. Must be living right. Take our braces. And what you'll find, and if you want to get a hand with this, what we made it like this on purpose, just to kind of span this joint here, and that'll strengthen this part too as well. We'll put a nail plate there. If you want, which would make it easier for you, especially if you're working alone, put a couple screws in there. You can use longer screws if you want just to hold this thing in place until you get the nail plates up and stuff. Again, this is just to hold it in place. Don't trust it. Don't walk away and have the little ones come around it as the thing tips over. That's just gonna, again, temporarily hold it. You can put one down here too. And again, you'll wanna check for square that this thing's straight up and down. You can take your square and so you can get that thing pretty square might have noticed these big cracks and that's because it come out of the junk pile but by the time we're through it's going to be as strong as you'll need it to be at least for us if you want to go new obviously you're probably going to go new four before it's pressure treated or otherwise and you're not going to have this cracking that just happened over weathering time i'm not worried about it with all these nail plates on and stuff and i'm not going to be squatting 500 pounds so it's going to be good for me and probably for most people that use it that's You can take these things, they're thin enough metal, you can just bend them to the shape. Just like that. And it's galvanized, won't rust, so outside it's perfect for that application. Since we have a nail plate here, we're gonna be putting a nail plate on top of the nail plate. Now these screws have enough bite to go through that bottom piece of metal, but sometimes you have to give it a little encouragement, which means you're gonna have to use some of that buff dude muscle. We're gonna go ahead and assemble the racking system. Now, one of the optional things that wasn't on the main list is a thing called Loctite. You can put, that's a liquid material and it comes in red or blue. The red is almost a permanent one. The blue is one that you can take off, but it still makes these threads really tight. Otherwise, you can crank the heck out of these and get them pretty dang tight. And if you want, you can get a couple pipe wrenches. But the first thing we're gonna do is put that one inch nipple onto the floor flange. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the union on. This is the part, let's see, I'm gonna get that on right. Buff dude style. This is the part where the bar is gonna go. At this part, we're gonna put this on. 
that's the four and a half inch pipe. <coughs> now, the cap is what's going to seal the deal. Let's go ahead and take this over to the rack. We're going to put it in the hole. We're going to put the cap on there. The cap is going to keep this thing from coming back out. There's no way that's going to come through that wood. And the really strong, strong part of this, you have a three and a half inches of wood thickness. Any kind of weight is going to go down on that. What's it going to have to do to break out? It would have to break out this whole piece and that's really virtually impossible. Someday maybe we'll do a video on how much weight it actually takes to break one of these. That'd be kind of cool actually. But otherwise there's your racking system. Again, you can use pipe wrenches to tighten that or lock tight. Don't put the lock tight on this because this is the one you're going to be taking off and pulling out for adjustment. But you could lock tight all these threads. So this is optional, but if you want to stake this baby to the ground, this is what you can do. We're going to drill four holes. And we're going to drive these stakes. This is just a piece of metal we got hanging around. We're going to stake it to the ground and then that sucker is going to be so stable. You don't have to do it, but if you want it in kind of a semi-permanent position, you can stake it down and it's good. It's really strong. And then if you go somewhere, pull stakes up and you're out of there. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> There you go. I'm gonna make this color just for us. So anyway, you can paint your own whatever color you wanna paint it or leave it rudimentary like you're a real Viking type of guy or girl. Anyway, thanks for watching. And look at all this land we have for an outdoor gym. We got a half rack. What's your suggestion for another build? Let's do this, let's do an outdoor gym, and someday all of us will be working out together. Until next time, DIY Duke is back. Stay bald.